You know, like the rest of the Bills Mafia, I too am bummed that the Bills lost. And I'm like, I've seen a similar situation like this before. And no, I'm not talking about Scott Norwood's wide right in the Super Bowl against the Giants. Because, think about it for a second. A team that has, uh, the Bills being the home team, seeing revenge on the Kansas State Chiefs, who had beaten them in the playoffs. The Chiefs are coming to their town, and the home team muffs it up to lose the game. This is the fumble. This is the fumble. The 1987 AFC Championship game. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, in 1986, the AFC Championship game was between the Denver Broncos and the Cleveland Browns. And the Browns are winning, and the Broncos need a touchdown to win. And so John Elway and the Broncos come up with a 98-yard drive in the span of 58 seconds, because that's how much time is left in the game, and they win. Now, from that day forward, it was known as the drive. Luckily, the Browns would have a chance at revenge not one year later. Once again, the Browns were at home, receiving revenge on the Broncos, and near the very end of the game, with an opportunity to win it all, the Browns fumbled the ball, and they lost. I can't help but see some similarities between the Bills game yesterday and the fumble. I mean, the Bills lost because of a missed field goal, yeah. But the fact that the Bills lost because of what they did, you know, that, that, um, yeah, you know, it just sort of, it was just something I couldn't help but notice. And if it's any consolation, that is my low that the Bills lost. My high is... Actually, my high and my act of kindness, I made a whole bunch of pickles for a whole bunch of people. So many pickles, in fact, that I may not... Well, here's the thing. I may not need to make pickles for a very long time. I'll probably talk more on that, like, tomorrow. But, um, for reference, I made 52 jars of pickles. 52 jars. And... I did learn some things, but I'll talk about that more... Probably on Wednesday. Because I need to dedicate tomorrow's episode to the first Hot Ones guest of 2024. Speaking of whatever number it is of 2024, we have the second One Piece manga chapter of 2024. Which, man, being a One Piece fan can be exhausting, especially in the month of January, because if there's ever a time of year where it's really quote unquote dry, it's right now. Because, you know, you have holidays and, you know, Japan related stuff. So, if you're a One Piece fan, you know this time of year all too well. It's just it's just a dry season for manga. It is. You know, holidays and stuff like that. And it, it's tough. But, at least we have... Actually, this could be the only other chapter in January. Oh, wait, no. I think... Wait, there's one next week. I, I'm reading right now. There's, there's one next week. I mean, no so. So... Yeah. So at least we have another chapter next week. So we got, uh, by my count, three in the month of January. Which is usually par for the course. Some years you only get two. So this is very lucky indeed. So, without further ado, One Piece Chapter 1104. Thank you, Daddy. 
Oh, I get the feeling I might cry at this one. Hold on. If I remember correctly, the last chapter ended with Kuma about to punch Saint, Saint Saturn for everything that's happened. And I remember thinking, okay, if one of three scenarios is going to happen, the punch is, is going to land. That's the first one. That's the one I'm obviously hoping for the most. The punch could do nothing, which would be bad. Actually, no, the, the punch missing. The punch missing, that would be bad, but it is possible to quickly recover and throw another punch. It is possible to do that. The worst thing that could happen is the punch does absolutely nothing. Because if the punch does absolutely nothing, then we are totally screwed. So, I'm really hoping this punch landed. Come on, okay. Here we go, come on. Wow, I just realized I'm gonna be, I'm literally condoning the fact that an old man is getting punched in the face. To be fair though, he's a very bad old man. Very bad. We do not like St. J. Garcia Seven. We do not like this guy. We hate this guy. He might just be the most evil villain in One Piece we've ever had so far. Okay, so, come on, let's see that punch land. Come on. Okay, okay. We're about to throw the punch. Okay. Looks like it's showing sort of a, um, uh, if you want to call it a best out for Kuma's flashback because Kuma's flashback was nothing but sad. Okay. My God. This is just sad. I mean, St. Saturn telling him that being a buccaneer boy and a slave, his options are slavery and death. His father telling him that his mother died. Jimmy crying. Jimmy calling via Den Den Muji saying that she's going to die. Bonnie being born. Okay. Right, Kuma had a self-destruction switch, didn't he? That St. Saturn activated. Why isn't it working? Oh, dude. Like, there's this panel of Kuma just being like, right here, like. Like, it is so badass. Oh, I hope this punch lands. We're gonna see if this punch lands. Come on, come on, come on. We gotta see if it lands. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, man! Oh, I've never seen... I've never been so happy to see an old man get punched in the face. Oh, my God! Oh, it's amazing! Oh, yes! Oh, this is cathartic! This is extremely cathartic! Oh, my God! Woo! All right! Okay! All right. Okay. All right. Oh, this is so awesome. Okay, let's see what else. Damn. Kuma didn't just punch him. He punched him so hard. St. Saturday slides like several buildings. You know what? As cathartic as it is, that is not a good enough punishment for Saturn. It is not. Okay? It is not a good enough punishment for him. Plus, let's be real here, it's shown in manga. You know the bad guy is going to come back. He'll appear as if he's damaged, but he's going to be coming back. Okay, this what happened okay? Everyone's freaking out that Kuma punched one of the five elders, Saturn. Um...
Okay, it looks like everybody can move again. So Vegapunk, Frankie, Sanji, Bonnie, they can all move. And Atlas, Atlas is searching, okay. It looks like Vegapunk is thinking about the self-destruction switch. Whoa. He's like, he did he didn't he didn't attach any self-destruction switch. Whoa. At least not in the um okay. It looks like not in the traditional self-destruction switch. See, normally when you think self-destruction, you think, you know, giant explosion. However, this self-destruction switch, because Vegapunk literally made Kuma into a cyborg, basically, um See, Vegapunk knew that if Kuma was made into a bomb, he'd become a suicide weapon. He didn't want that. So what he did is, he attached a total shutdown switch. That's another form of self-destruction. Basically, now that it's been thrown, Kuma should be in a vegetative state. That's, that's shutdown. That is your body shutting down. Okay. Without the ability to act on your own free will, or even carry orders. So there really isn't any reason why you should be able to do this. And there's no reason, there's no basis for why he's here. Hold on, it's not the physical strength of the Buccaneer, which that's what Kuma is, that makes him remarkable. For one point in time, they, they what? Ooh, there's something interesting about the Buccaneers. We don't know. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I haven't seen Luffy at all in this chapter yet. I say this because they mentioned we're, we're, we're strong. No, it's Luffy. Where is he? Huh. Of the chapter right here. It says, Thank you, Daniel. Bonnie is saying, I mean, at this point, we've been keeping up. Bonnie isn't really Kuma's daughter. Kuma, Kuma took her in, raised her as a her own. Bonnie's saying she saw her in all his memories, she saw the fact that her mom, Ginny, was a wonderful person, and that Kuma did write all those letters after all. And she was happy to find out about that. Um. Oh, God. This is just so sweet. Bonnie says everyone calls you a tyrant. But I know my dad. Everyone says, everyone calls you a tyrant. But I know my daddy is the kindest and most wonderful man in the entire world. You know, I'll never forget it. Um. Oh, God, this speaks to me. I actually know a family that consists of two children who most recently lost their father. So I can't help but feel, feel horrible. Um. Ah, ooh. Okay, I'm cool. Let's get through this, okay. Uh, oh. Yep, yeah, I was right. Looks like, uh, Looks like Saturn is, uh, still standing. Pretty damaged, though. <laughs> I love that Saturn's like, what happened? And then Vegapunk's like, you know what? You can call it the power of love. And if it makes you feel any better, Okay. Ooh. 
Good God. Like, Saturn legit lost his arm when Kuma punched him. That's how hard he punched him. And Saturn can regenerate it. Oh my God, they may have to kill this guy Cell style. On the out chance you've never seen Dragon Ball Z, there was a villain named Cell who could actually regenerate his entire body from a single cell. Basically, you need to completely destroy him from existence in order to kill him. I'm pretty sure that's what you gotta do here. Oh no, Sam's about to attack Kuma. Sanji! Alright! Sanji kicked away one of uh, Saturn's giant spider legs. Okay. And Frankie shows up. Yeah, Frankie! Frankie got Saturn with the radical beam. Nice! Alright, this is awesome. Uh oh. Kizuru, what are you doing? And Kizuru kicked away Frankie. Then again, I don't think it's because Kuma's, uh, Kizuru is following, following orders. I think he knows just how dangerous this situation is. I think he just kicked Frankie just to get him out of the way. So he doesn't get hurt about at what's about to happen. And at least that's what I hope it is. Looks like they're all taking, looks like the good guys are taking Kuma away. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I love that Vegapunk calls out Kizuru right here and says, have you no heart? You're a sad man, Kizer. Kizer is like, yeah, I'm pretty miserable. I should have brought darker shades. Kizer wears the sunglasses a lot. Did Saint Sarah just activate a Buster Call? Oh shit, he did. Oh. Okay, so if. You don't know what a Buster Call is. What traditionally happens is five Navy ships, along with ten Vice Admirals, arrive at an island and completely destroy it. I destroy it. We're talking mass destruction and mass genocide. Here at Egghead, though, there's already 100 battleships right there. With a gaggle of vice admirals too. They really don't care about destroying punk records anymore. They just want it gone. Oh God. This is insane. Ah. Uh. I mean, don't get me wrong. The reason why Saturn activated the Buster Call is pretty simple. I mean, Vegapunk said the secrets of the world. Kuma is a buccaneer, so he's there. Not to mention Luffy, who was noticeably absent in this chapter, has awakened the sun god Nika's power. You know, this would be the opportunity to kill them all if he could. So, I get it. But man, is this awful. I mean... The two things I can take away from this chapter... When Luffy comes back, and it should be in the next chapter, hopefully... It's gonna be big. And also, um... I, uh... Again, I mentioned a family that I know that consists of two kids that just recently lost their father. 
that image of Kuma, of Bonnie just walking up and hugging Kuma. Man, I got him. I better turn off this camera before I start to cry. So, I hope you all liked this video. And if you did, you know what you know to do is like and subscribe. Um, but I am still very humble. I made this video for all of you guys watching. Enjoy for today. I hope we have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Oh, happy Monday. And remember, for the you guys want to talk, the channel is going to be here to lend it. I'll see you back. Take care. Make good choices. 607 all day, baby.